I'll say just a few things about Rajashi Janakananda's life. But more, really the most important thing is just his time as a disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda and what it meant and what it means to be a great disciple of a great master. And I'll also say a few things that Swami Kriyanandaji said about him. A few words about his life, but you can read these online. But his childhood, he was born into abject poverty, walking barefoot to school a couple miles each way and had no money. But he was very bright and intelligent as a child. And by the age of something like 25 or something, he was in charge of this huge multi-million insur dollar insurance company. So he had extraordinary energy and just extraordinary intelligence, awareness, and he became a millionaire very, very quickly during a time in America when the, during the Great Depression, during very challenging times. And yet he was always very, very unhappy. He was extremely unhappy. He said that he was just a nervous wreck and just couldn't handle that worldly life. Obviously, he had deep spiritual samskaras. And his world life, worldly life and home life was extremely unsettled. He married at a very young age, and his wife, who he was loyal to throughout his life, but she was extremely mentally unbalanced to the point where she would be screaming at him for following Yogananda. And, but he was very patient. Master said that she came to teach him patience and unconditional love and forbearance. But then everything changed when he met Master. This was in 1932. Yogananda came to Kansas City to give a lecture. And at that very first meeting, he met Rajashi and gave him the experience of Christ consciousness and samadhi, apparently. And then later, once Master said, he meditated six hours with me that day. And so he really had the samskars to be very close to this master, and he had spiritual samskars, whatever reasons he had for <coughs> not fulfilling those samskars until he was already engrossed in the world. It gives hope to many of us that at any time when our spiritual awakening comes, we can make great spiritual progress. But we have to follow how these great ones have done it. And Yogananda said, that when people would ask him how, he called him Saint Lin because his name was James Lin. That was his uh, birth name. Master gave him the, the sannyas name of Rajashi Janakananda. And Master said he was able to make such spiritual progress. Very simply, he knows how to listen. And so this is, receptivity is everything. And really the greatest disciples, Swami Kriyananda, I think, that was, in many ways, that was his real greatness, was to show us how to be great disciples or how to, to receive. We don't necessarily want to be great, but we want to find God. And so it is all about receptivity and listening. Asking, listening, opening the heart, being with the guru, being with the master in meditation, studying their teachings, living their teachings. Rajashi would spend many of his holidays and time off visiting Master at the Hermitage at Mount Washington. And there's something that Rajasi said that I just found very, very helpful. He said once very, very sweetly and humbly to somebody, he said, I have the Christ consciousness. Nobody has to tell me what it is. I know, I have experienced it. When the ego steps out, God steps in. When the ego steps in, God steps out. There is not room for both. And so just remember this. When the ego steps out, God steps in. It's as simple as that. When the little self steps in, God steps out. And there is never going to be room for both. Now I'll say a few things that Swami Kriyananda said about him. Swamiji, in some ways, had a very, not so much an outward connection with him. Master had such a connection with him that they would walk the grounds holding hands in ecstasy. And they rarely had to speak. They were just in bliss in each other's presence all the time. But when Rajasi became the president and successor 
of Master and the president of SRF. Master actually said once that he passed his spiritual mantle on to Rajashi and gave him his power. And there's amazing stories of Rajashi after Master left the body of visions, experiences that he recounted of being with Master. But Swamiji really connected with Rajashi on that way because Swamiji also was, I think, one of the few who were really, really pushing to expand Master's teachings. And even though Rajashi was only president of SRF for only about two years or so before he left the body, uh, he put Swamiji in charge of reorganizing aspects of the work and gave his full support to that. And one interesting thing is that Master told Swamiji, I think once or twice, you have a great work to do. And Swamiji just, it was puzzling because Master never told another person, another soul, what he told Swamiji. And Rajashi, after Master left the body, he came, Swamiji came to him for his blessing. And Rajashi just whispered to him silently, Master has a great work to do through you, Walter, and he will give you the strength to do it. And so there was this deep attunement and interconnection. Just humorously, Swamiji wrote to Master or to Rajashi the next day, and he said, I don't want to do a great work. I just want to serve Master unnoticed. And Rajashi's reply was just to come to Swamiji smiling and bless him and not even say a word. He spoke very little. He was not an acharya. He only spoke publicly a couple times as far as uh, anything that I've heard. But he just showed that the way to serve the Guru is whatever way he gives to us. And Master never asked him to be lecturing or teaching that way. One time, Swamiji recounted that Master was walking through the gardens in Encinitas with one of the disciples. And Rajasi was sitting meditating. And Master just whispered, said, let's walk quietly and not disturb him. And then later he told that disciple, you have no idea what great blessings are drawn to this work every time one of his followers goes as deep in meditation as Rajashi does. And so this really is how we serve. It's not by just doing a lot of stuff. In this context, then Swamiji wrote, centuries ago, St. John of the Cross said words to the effect that one act of divine love, that love which is the fruit of deep meditation, is of greater value to the church than the combined activities of dedicated but unmeditative monks, priests, and nuns. Activities of dedicated but unmeditative. And so any action that springs from divine love, from deep meditation, conveys grace and power and blessing. And so sometimes I think it's helpful to remember that it's not just a matter of doing, doing, doing more, more, more to share and spread Master's teachings, but that we have to do it from the depth of our hearts, from the depth of our spiritual contact, from the depths of deep love for God. And even a simple act done from that depth of love and stillness and meditation has much more power than a million restless actions, even effective actions because they don't have that power of God nearly as much. And this is what Swamiji was saying about Rajashi, that he didn't have to act outwardly and, quote, do things. He simply had to be in this deep inner communion with God and Guru. So again, just to say what I said at the beginning, that Rajashi was a great disciple. And when there is such a disciple, it behooves us to learn how to be a great disciple. Because Rajasi, he said, and this is what Swamiji writes about Rajasi and his discipleship. He says, to be a true disciple, we need to have the attitude of openness to the guru, to be willing to be corrected at, at any time. We have to be disciples as much at the end of the path as we were at the beginning. Once the master said to Rajasi, who had already attained Nirbhakalpa Samadhi at this time, don't forget where your power comes from. 
And though he was in Nirvikalpa Samadhi and a multi-millionaire and an advanced yogi, he replied to Master just like a child. He said, I won't, Master. It comes from you. And Swamiji says, the love that you find between the Master and the disciple, when the disciple has gotten out of his ego, and there is only God sharing with God, is so sweet and beautiful. We would see Master and Rajashi walking around the grounds, hand in hand, and just gazing at everything with such wonder, because they were seeing God there. And someone asked Swamiji one time, or maybe just said, oh, it would be nice to have that kind of intensely close relationship to a master. And Swamiji said that very few can handle that type of close relationship because people have, even if you have a little bit of ego, the ego is gratified by how much the master loves me personally rather than just the two of us, guru and disciple, loving God together equally. And so this is how we learn to find God, is by studying the great disciples of the Master. We study the Master all, also, the Master's teachings, but really spend as much time studying the disciples to see what it takes to find God, because it all comes from the Guru. Again, Rajashi saying, I know Master, it comes from you. So anything great spiritually comes from the Guru. And so more than anything, learn how to be a great disciple the way Rajasi was, the way Swami Kriyananda was too. So Ramesh will share a few things about Rajasi Janakananda right now. Thank you Devashiji for sharing those things. Uh, and truly he knows how to listen is I think what we can all start from from learning Rajasiji's life because none of us, uh, many of us don't wait and just listen. And it's not just listening outwardly, but quieting our mind and listening it within. Uh, Master says, God whispers to us silently. So we should always be open inwardly to find the guidance whenever it is trying to reach us because Master said, who thinks me near, I am near. I'm actually having a little fun within because I decided today I will share, uh, like I had made a list of a few points I would share today. And as I was listening to Devarshiji, he didn't know I was going to share this, but he shared the exact same points. And I was like, okay, now what should I do? But not to worry, I won't just drag this out. I have other things to share too. And uh, a few things, uh, you can call it interesting facts from Rajasiji's life. Uh, at the age of five, his teacher didn't pay any attention to him. So what he did, there was a blue uh, back speller. Uh, I think that in those times, a dictionary was called that. So he read and memorized that. And when he was asked questions, he would just use the strangest of the words and give meaning from them. So from early on, he was an intelligent yogi. So we see that throughout his life in all the things he did in meditation. He didn't have to learn anything from master. Right away, master came to him and gave him uh, Sabikalpa Samadhi, Christ Consciousness, because his soul was ripe, as in master's words. So we all need to work on ripening our souls so that we can receive that great experience. Uh, because as in the poem Samadhi, it comes through Guru-given meditation. So Guru is right there to give it to you when you are ready, but we need to be ready. Other things were uh, Rajasi ji, he set out at the young age of, I think, 14 on his own. So how many of us can do that today on our own, setting out at 14 to like find out our way by the age of 17, even in a very rare, uh, rarely, uh, you can say, jobs available profession. He was sought out by everyone because he was sincere, resourceful and never had any ill will towards anyone. Again, a quality of a yogi we all could emulate. Master said we should emulate Rajasiji's life because he was his foremost disciple. Not just a great disciple, but the greatest one according to him for his own uh, path. He said 100% uh, Rajasiji followed his instructions. 100%, not 99, not 50, 100%. So that is another thing we all could learn from. And uh, another thing was, 
Rajasthi ji did support master's work through his uh, spiritual vibrations through meditations, but he also financially supported it. Uh, when the Mount Washington was in dire needs of money or it would have gone bankrupt, he came in and supported the work. When master went to India, he just tuned into his Guru's wishes and kept it secret from master and built a seaside hermitage for master. Sri Yukteswarji predicted uh, Yogananda ji would have a seaside hermitage in America. And Rajasi ji built that. I think Yogananda ji knew about that in his higher self, but he played the part. And when he actually saw it, he was very much surprised uh, that his little one, he used to call Rajasi ji as little one, his little one built that special gift for him. And that was one of the important things that he gave his everything to his guru, uh, dedicated to for 23 years. And yes, he was, he said he was very worried and nervous and unsatisfied, but he led a very busy life. Rajasi ji led a very busy life. He was a uh, head of, I think, an insurance company, oil uh, fields, about 25,000 acres in different states in America, railroad. He had 500 acres of fruit orchards and he was managing all of it. At the age of 25, as Devashi ji said, he was a general manager and he actually studied uh, law accountancy and his high school high school studies all of those things together while also doing a job as an auditor i don't know very many people can do that in even today's standards and be successful at them but he did all of that and they actually had to uh, make an exception and lower the age for getting a, a law degree at that point in america they had to lower the age so that raja cg could get it make an exception for him so Yes, he was a yogi, but he was very efficient spiritually and materially. The kind of combination Yogananda Ji and our great Guru showed us we need to achieve in this world too. Spiritual efficiency of the East through meditation, yoga, and the material efficiency of the West through being very effective in whatever we do and not wasting time. Another thing I wanted to read a few words Yogananda Ji said about uh, Rajarsi. Before that, do you know what the word Rajarsi Janakananda means? Yes, it means a royal rishi, uh, someone who is a rishi as well as a king. But Yogananda Ji interpreted it as a king of rishis. So it was not even a rishi, but a king among them. And Janakananda, as we all know, comes from the name of the uh, father of Sita from Ramayana, uh, Janak, Raja Janak. Even he was a king and a rishi together. So. In honor of that, Yogananda Ji named Raja Shri Ji, uh, Saint Lin as that name. So, and he said specifically, we all should emulate to be like Raja Shri Ji. So here are a few words. His whole existence, this is Paramansa Yogananda Ji about Raja Shri Ji. His whole existence is an exalted one. Even though he attends to heavy business duties and is required to travel extensively in connection with his business responsibilities, he has had many temptations thrown in his way, but he has not succumbed to them. He has felt that joy within which is greater than anything the world can offer. Lord, thou art more tempting than any other temptation. This was Yogananda Ji's uh, small description of Raja Siddhi, that in spite of his many duties, he made it a point to uh, meditate daily. Many of us would think, oh, he got Sabi Kalpa Samadhi in his first meditation. Why does he have to even meditate daily? He can just go there whenever he wants to. But no, he meditated daily. Uh, I think Devashi Ji mentioned it, but I'm not sure. He would uh, go early in the morning to his office, pass a note, uh, his secretary wouldn't even come, so he would keep a note on the desk in conference. So they all thought he was in conference, but he would go early and meditate till 10 a.m. He said he never told his employees he was in conference with God, but he was meditating in his office early in the morning, uh, I think six hours daily, because I think as Devashiji said, it was difficult for him to meditate at home. So that is what he did uh, wherever possible, whenever possible, he meant, uh, went into communion with God. And whenever possible, he came to master to be with him, both on the conscious and superconscious planes. Uh, 
And Sri Yukteswar Ji never, when he was in his physical body, Sri Yukteswar Ji never directly addressed Raja Sri Ji. But he spoke through Master the following words after his passing. This is Sri Yukteswar Ji through Yogananda Ji describing Raja Sri Ji, telling him, uh, Beloved son, your life and actions have glorified us. By us, I think he's meaning the line of gurus. You are a celestial instrument. Expand fearlessly in the realm of renunciation for the cause of self-realization, India and humanity. India's spiritual habits mark your forehead. If you actually see Raja Siji's photos, you can see that in his forehead. Your actions are joyfully recognized and witnessed by the All Supreme and by the Gurus. So Yogananda Ji included those words in his letter saying, Sri Yukteswa Ji is speaking right now through me to you. And we are all very happy with what you are doing. So another thing Swamiji said about Raja Siji was that in a certain way after Paramahansa Yogananda Ji's passing, Raja Siji's eyes metamorphosized into Yogananda Ji's eyes like he passed on his spiritual mantle but he actually the physical characteristics also showed in the spiritual successor of paramahansa yogananda ji and he would refer to the other disciples Raja Siji, after yogananda ji's passings he would refer to other disciples as paramahansa yogananda ji would refer to them the unique names the unique ways they would communicate everything was the same and he never uh, he actually said uh, master used to tell him, I am in you, you are in me. He said, I never really understood that till he actually, uh, Paramahansa Ji Yogananda Ji left his body and he went into Sabhikalpa Samadhi, Rajasi Janakananda. He experienced that state of consciousness and he said, now all I feel is master. Master's love, master's joy, that's all he felt. And uh, that is what he expressed, which is what uh, Swa uh, Swami Kweyananda Ji also sent, said towards the end of his life, uh, I don't know where Yogananda Ji begins and Kweyananda ends. So that is one thing we all can learn from the lives of all of these great disciples, is that ego steps out, God steps in, and then ego doesn't have to come in again, because all that is needed is God, Guru, and their grace. And yes, Rajasi Ji did led a very busy life which had its toll on him you couldn't see him by the age of i think 30 or something he had very little hair left on his uh, head but that didn't remove the divine sacred potential within him which we saw in his later life so we all need to meditate deeply we all need to serve outwardly also Whenever Rajasi Ji came to Mount Washington or to Encinitas, his ashram duties was taking care of a little, uh, I think, small garden or something. And from that, he would have special, I think, vegetables or fruits. And he would say, this, I have made it for you, Master. Maybe you can taste it. And he would send it to uh, Paramahansa Yogananda Ji with little notes. So even when they communed on the highest plane of Samadhi, they still maintained the outward communications. They didn't need to write all these letters and communications with each other. They were in constant communion all the time. The thoughts, consciousness, everything was in perfect attunement. But they did because for us, so that we could learn through their actions, through their words, through their writings. And Rajasi Ji was a man of very few words. He didn't spoke much, but whenever he was called to speak, he would speak in few words humbly and he would say i have experienced christ consciousness i know it through experience that is all he would say and that uh, you have to tune into guru simple uh, simple words and effective words it is actually ironic in a way because yogananda ji's foremost disciple was not a sannyasi meditating in the himalayas he was a householder which is what yogananda ji said too that indeed that is the higher path being a Swami or a Yogi, he said, being a Yogi in the world is the higher path, provided you maintain a mental non-attachment, egotistical non-attachment to your desires, being in the world. So us monks around here are trying our best, but 
whether you are a householder or a monk doesn't matter in as much that you maintain an egotistical non-attachment and be in tune listen to the great gurus their words vibrations all we need to do is think about them those who think me near i am near that is what paramanso yogananda ji said and that is what every one of us must have felt at different points in our lives another thing was rajasi ji he uh, yogananda ji said in his previous incarnations when he was arjuna rajasi ji was nakula so there was this connection going on even from past incarnations and that samskara we all also carry on because we have that connection through our gurus through many incarnations but through every incarnation we have the potential to receive that divine love actually uh, rajasi ji and yogananda ji's uh, uh, relationship you can say of divine love is a rare but perfect expression of divine love in human form we don't see that often in this world even in the lives of saints it is very rare to see that kind of connection yogananda ji said he tried to give that love to another disciple of his that uh, perfect divine love to another disciple of his but that disciple had ego so he couldn't receive it perfectly and he actually in a way uh, the way we can understand it in lila's way the sacred lila's way he broke master's heart and master almost left america after that but uh durga mata says who was another disciple of paramanse yogananda ji that god then sent him rajasi janakananda to mend his heart to send a disciple who could actually receive in that highest manner that true divine love and communion so that is a very important thing we need to understand that the master can give us that divine love he is actually trying to give us that divine love we need to open the curtains of our own ignorance and ego and let go of our own little desires and let that divine love of god gurus come through to us and we need to match us on that level of consciousness so with that i would just would like to end today's session and in the following weeks we would other monks would also share uh, on different letters between master rajasi rajasi master and all we need to do is listen tune in and emulate thank you very much dear friends and in the words of rajasi i would end all i can feel is master okay thank you thank you ramesh and thank you all have a good evening <laughs>